Hi guys, it is another cold, gray, miserable, depressing midwinter day here in the end times in paradise on Sunday morning, April 8th, 2018. April my ass. Lion sack of shit weather, man. It's supposed, they're saying it's supposed to be 72 degrees right now. Yeah, right. Little Sancho Panza in his winter coat. I'm in here in my fucking uh, goose down vest. But anyway, since it is Sunday morning, uh, just gonna do your old doomsday preacher is gonna do what he does every Sunday. And as I mentioned a couple of nights ago, I have had the pleasure of uh, reading, I believe it was the last book ever written by my Humpty Dumpty tribe hero, Kurt Vonnegut. Kurt Vonnegut, uh, he wrote this book when he was 82 years old, A Man Without a Country. And it takes about uh, two or three hours to read this whole little book. It's not a novel. It's simply an 82-year-old man uh, looking back over his life and just summing up his opinion on his fellow humans. His fellow humans. So uh, I'm gonna just be, I'm just gonna go through the entire book, reading several passages. Let's start with gallows humor. <clears throat> True enough, there are such things as laughless jokes, what Freud called gallows humor. There are real-life situations so hopeless that no relief is imaginable. While we were being bombed in Dresden, sitting in a cellar with our arms over our heads in case the ceiling fell, one soldier said as though he were a duchess in a mansion on a cold and rainy night. I wonder what the poor people are doing tonight. From gallows humor to evolution. <clears throat> evolution can go to hell as far as I'm concerned. What a mistake we are. We have mortally wounded this sweet life-supporting planet, the only one in the Milky Way with a century of transportation whoopee. Our government is conducting a war against drugs, is it? Let them go after petroleum. Talk about a destructive high. You can put some of this stuff in your car and you can go 100 miles an hour, run over the neighbor's dog, and tear the atmosphere to smithereens. Hey, as long as we are stuck with being homo sapiens, why mess around? Let's wreck the whole joint. Anybody got an atomic bomb? Who doesn't have an atomic bomb nowadays? But I have to say this in defense of humankind in no matter what era in history, including the Garden of Eden, everybody just got here. And except for the Garden of Eden, there were already all these games going on that could make you act crazy, even if you were not crazy to begin with. Some of the crazy making games going on today are love and hate liberalism and conservatism, automobiles and credit cards, golf, and girls' basketball. Yes, uh... <laughs> anyway, guys, I, I, I could uh, pretty much just open the page anywhere uh, <coughs> in this book, but I'm just uh, going to move ahead. Okay, this is talking about his own addictions. I am, of course, notoriously hooked on cigarettes. I keep hoping the things will kill me. A fire at one end and a fool at the other. But I'll tell you one thing. I once had a high that not even a crack, that not even crack cocaine could match. 
that was when I got my first driver's license. Look out, world. Here comes Kurt Vonnegut. And my car back then, a Studebaker, as I recall, was powered, as are almost all means of transportation and other machinery today, and electric power plants and furnaces by the most abused, addictive, and destructive drugs of all, fossil fuels. When you got here, even when I got here, the industrialized world was already hopelessly hooked on fossil fuels, and very soon now, there won't be any, be any left. Cold turkey. Can I tell you the truth? I mean, this isn't the TV news, is it? Here is what I think the truth is. We are all addicts of fossil fuels in a state of denial, and like so many addicts about to face cold turkey, our leaders are now committing violent crimes to get what little is left of what we're hooked on. <clears throat> Our close cousins, the gorillas and orangs and chimps and gibbons, have gotten along just fine all this time while eating raw vegetable matter, whereas we not only prepare hot meals, but we have now all but destroyed this once salubrious planet as a life support system in fewer than 200 years mainly by making thermodynamic whoopee with fossil fuels. The f Englishman F Michael Faraday built the first electric generator only 172 years ago. Well, you got to add 14 to all these now. The German Carl Benz built the first automobile powered by an internal combustion engine only 119 years ago. The first oil well in the USA, now a dry hole, was drilled in Pennsylvania only 145 years ago. <coughs> Fossil fuels are so easily set alight. Yes, and we are presently touching off nearly the very last whiffs and drops and chunks of them. All the lights are about to go out. No more electricity. All forms of transportation are about to stop, and the planet Earth will soon have a crust of skulls and bones and dead machinery. <coughs> and nobody can do a thing about it. It is too late in the game. Don't spoil the party, but here's the truth. We have squandered our planet's resources, including air and water, as though there were no tomorrow, so now there isn't going to be one. So here goes that junior prom but that's not the half of it. Yes, I was. <clears throat> Today, we have contraptions like nuclear submarines armed with Poseidon missiles that have H-bombs in their warheads. And we have contraptions like computers that cheat you out of becoming that cheat you out of becoming. Bill Gates says, wait till you see what your computer can become. But it is you who should be doing the becoming, not the damn fool computer. What you can become is the miracle you were born to be through the work that you do. Yep. <clears throat> Let's see. No matter how corrupt, greedy, and heartless our governments, our corporations, our media, and our religious and charitable institutions may become, the music will still be wonderful. Now, during our catastrophic 
Now, during our catastrophically idiotic war in Vietnam, the music kept getting better and better and better. We lost that war, by the way. Order could not be restored in Indochina until the people kicked us out. That war only made billionaires out of millionaires. Today's wars are making trillionaires out of billionaires. Now, I call that progress. <clears throat> when I went to grade school in Indianapolis, we used to draw pictures of the houses of tomorrow, boats of tomorrow, airplanes of tomorrow, and there were all these dreams of the future. Of course, at that time, everything had come to a stop. He, he's talking about during the Depression. The factories had stopped, the Great Depression was on, and the magic word then was prosperity. Someday, prosperity will come. We were preparing for it. We were dreaming of the sorts of houses human beings should inhabit ideal dwellings, ideal forms of transportation. What is radically new today, 14 years ago, is that my daughter Lily, who has just turned 21, finds herself, as do your children, as does George W. Bush himself a kid, and Saddam Hussein, on and on, heir to a shockingly recent history of human slavery, to an AIDS epidemic, and to nuclear submarines slumbering on the floors of fjords in Iceland and elsewhere, their crews prepared at a moment's notice to turn industrial quantities of men, women, and children into radioactive suit and bone meal by means of rocket and H-bomb warheads. Our children have inherited techn technologies whose byproducts, whether in war or peace, are rapidly destroying the whole planet as a breathable, drinkable system for supporting life of any kind. Anyone who has studied the science and talks to scientists notice that we are in terrible danger now. Human beings, past and present, have trashed the joint. The biggest truth to face now, what is probably making me unfunny for the rest of my life, is that I don't think people give a damn whether the planet goes on or not. It seems to me as if everyone is living as members of Alcoholics Anonymous do, day by day, and a few more days will be enough. I know of very few people who are dreaming of a world for their grandchildren. <clears throat> But I know that there is not a chance in hell of America becoming humane and, re and reasonable because power corrupts us and absolute power corrupts us absolutely. Human beings are chimpanzees who get crazy drunk on power by saying that our leaders are power drunk chimpanzees, am I in danger of wrecking the morale of our soldiers fighting and dying in the Middle East? Their morale, like so many lifeless bodies, is already shot to pieces. They are being treated, as I never was, like toys a rich kid got for Christmas. Yep. <clears throat> oh, it, you know, it, it, all of his rants in 2004 are being leveled against George, against Baby Bush. I can only imagine what uh, Kurt Vonnegut would sound like in the Trump scene. <clears throat> Persuasive guessing 
persuasive guessing has been at the core of leadership for so long for all of human experience so far that it is wholly unsurprising that most of the leaders of this planet, in spite of all the information that is suddenly ours, want the guessing to go on. It is now their turn to guess and guess and guess and be listened to. Some of the loudest, most proudly ignorant guessing in the world is going on in Washington today. Our leaders are sick of all the solid information that has been dumped onto humanity by research and scholarship and investigative reporting. They think that the whole country is sick of it. And they could be right. It is not the gold standard that they want to put us back on. They want something even more basic. They want to put us back on the snake oil standard. And then he lists some examples as of 2004, the snake oil standard of baby bush. <clears throat> Loaded pistols are good for everyone except inmates in prisons or lunatic asylums. Billions spent on weapons will bring inflation down. The more hydrogen bomb warheads we have all set to go off at a moment's notice, the safer humanity is and the better off the world will be that our grandchildren will inherit. <coughs> Industrial wastes and especially those that are radioactive, hardly ever hurt anybody, so everybody should just shut up about them. Industries should be allowed to do whatever they want to do. Bribe, wreck the environment just a little, fix prices, screw dumb customers, put a stop to competition and raid the treasury when they go broke. And if you actually are an educated thinking person, you will not be welcome in Washington, D.C. I know a couple of bright seventh graders who would not be welcome in Washington, D.C. Do you remember those doctors a few months back who got together and announced that it was a simple, clear medical fact that we could not survive even a moderate attack by hydrogen bombs. They were not welcome in Washington, D.C. He, he refers a lot in this book to two of his heroes, uh, Albert Einstein, and uh, Mark Twain. <clears throat> Albert Einstein and Mark Twain gave up on the human race at the end of their lives, even though Twain hadn't even seen the First World War. War is now a form of TV entertainment, and what made the First World War so particularly entertaining were two American inventions, barbed wire and the machine gun. Like my distinct betters, Einstein and Twain, I now give up on people too. I am a veteran of the Second World War, and I have to say this is not the first time I have surrendered to a pitiless war machine. My last words, life is no way to treat an animal, not even a mouse. What can be said to our young people now that psychopathic personality, personalities, which is to say persons without consciences, without senses of pity or shame, have taken all the money in the treasuries of our government and corporations and made it all theirs? But I myself feel that our country, for whose constitution 
I thought in a just war might as well have been invaded by Martians and body snatchers. Sometimes I wish it had been. What has happened instead is that it was taken over by means of the sleaziest, low comedy, Keystone Cop style coup d'etat imaginable. George W. Bush, imagine what he would say about Donald Trump, has gathered around him upper crust C students who know no history or geography, plus not so closeted white supremacists, also known as Christians, and plus more frighteningly psycho -pers psychopathic personalities or PPs, the medical term for smart, personable people who have no conscience. Some people are born deaf, some are born blind or whatever, and this book is about congenitally defective human beings of a sort that is making this whole country and many other parts of the planet go completely haywire nowadays. These were people born without consciences, and suddenly they're taking charge of everything. PPs are presentable. They know full well the suffering their actions cause others, but they do not care. They cannot care because they are nuts. They have a screw loose. So many of these heartless PPs now hold big jobs in our federal government as though they were leaders instead of sick. They have taken charge. They have taken charge of communications and the schools, so we might as well be Poland under occupation. They might have felt that taking our country into an endless war was simply something decisive to do. What has allowed so many of these PPs to rise so high in corporations and now in government is that they are so decisive. They are gonna do something every fucking day and they're not afraid. Unlike normal people, they are never filled with doubts for the simple reason they don't give a fuck what happens next. Simply can't do this, do that mobilize the reserves and send them to the Mexican border, I added that. Mobilize the reserves, privatize the public schools, attack Iraq, cut health care, tap everybody's telephone, cut taxes on the rich, build a trillion dollar missile shield, fuck habeas corpus and the Sierra Club, and in these times, kiss my ass. There is a tragic flaw in our precious Constitution, and I don't know what can be done to fix it. This is it. Only nutcases want to be president. This was true even in high school. Only clearly disturbed people ran for class president. <clears throat> and on the subject of books, our daily news sources, newspapers, and TV are now so craven, so unvigilant on behalf of the American people, so uninformative that only in books do we learn what is really going on. So then he relates a, uh, a conversation he was having with one of his friends who, uh, who was just beginning to go down the uh, we are so fucked rabbit hole. Yes, little dog, we'll be back in front of the furnace soon enough. <clears throat> I told him that if he doubted that we, meaning humans, are demons in hell, he should read The Mysterious Stranger, which Mark Twain wrote in 1898, long before the First World War. And the title story 
Mark Twain proves to his own grim satisfaction and to mine as well that Satan, not God, created the planet Earth and, quote, the damned human race, close quote. If you doubt that, just read your morning paper. Never mind what paper. Never mind what date. All right, we're getting to the back of this, and then he uh, relates. Uh, this is him in another conversation with a friend, <clears throat> talking again, talking to one to one of his clueless moron friends. Quote. We are killing this planet as a life support system with the poisons from all the thermodynamic whoopy we're making with atomic energy and fossil fuels, and everybody knows it, and practically nobody cares. This is how crazy we are. I think the planet's immune system is trying to get rid of us with AIDS and new strains of flu and tuberculosis and so on, I think the planet should get rid of us. We're really awful animals. I mean that dumb Barbara Streisand song, people who need people are the luckiest people in the world. She's talking about cannibals. Lots to eat. Yes, the planet is trying to get rid of us, but I think it is too late. And I said goodbye to my friend, hung up the phone, sat down, and wrote this epitaph. The good earth, we could have saved it, but we were too damn cheap and lazy. And then the last chapter, he has an apology to make. I apologize to all of you who are the same age as my grandchildren, and many of you reading this are probably the same age as my grandchildren. They, like you, are being royally shafted and lied to by our baby boomer corporations and governments. Yes, this planet is in a terrible mess, but it has always been a mess. There have never been any good old days. There have just been days. And as I say to my grandchildren, don't look at me. I just got here. And then uh, I am going to close with his closing poem. Uh, the, this is the very sh same poem that Dr. Doom shared with me uh, on Wednesday. And the, but since we will never hear that interview with Dr. Doom when he was reading this, uh, I'm just going to do it myself. Unbelievable coincidence that the day after that blow up with Dr. Doom, I opened this book. And, and it closes with Dr. Doom's favorite poem called Requiem by Brother Kurt Vonnegut. <clears throat> the crucified planet Earth, should it find a voice and a sense of irony, might now well say of our abuse of it. Forgive them, Father, they know not what they do. The irony would be that we know what we are doing. When the last living thing has died on account of us, how poetical it would be if Earth could say, in a voice floating up, perhaps from the floor of the Grand Canyon, it is done. People did not like it here. Obviously, uh, people did not like it here, or it would not be done. But, uh, anyway, amen.
Amen Brother Kurt Vonnegut. 82 years old, uh, two years before he died, Kurt Vonnegut spelling out to anybody on this planet giving a flying fuck uh, the mess we've made of this world and it's too late to do a goddamn thing about it. Kurt Vonnegut, a man without a country, and my guess is this book went straight to the scrap heap uh, probably if it got reviewed at all I'm gonna take a wild guess that it got the most lackluster reviews of any book Kurt Vonnegut ever wrote because nobody nobody wants to hear it but thank you brother Kurt Vonnegut for doing your part to educate the clueless fucking morons. Yes, little dog, are you ready to get back in front of the furnace on April? Smoke him if you got him, guys. You know why.